Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw. I'm here at the Thompson Central Park with the general manager, Matt Sapoy, and he's overseeing a brand new hotel. It's actually still in progress here. Uh, it, it, we'll talk about what it was before, uh, but it's a brilliant new part of the Thompson uh, brand. And I've been to a few nice Thompsons, but this is, this is a great one, and we're, we're just very close to Central Park here. We're gonna talk about this wonderful new hotel in Midtown Manhattan and a whole lot more on Insider Travel Now Matt, uh, spent the night last night with you. Thank you very much for hosting me and got a sense of your rooms and everything else. But let, let's start by talking about what, what was this hotel? What's the background? Absolutely. First of all, James, thanks so much for, for talking to me today. So back in the day, this was the Parker Meridian Hotel. Right, as, as a lot of New Yorkers do. <laughs> right, a 40-story building, 729 rooms. And then in 2019, it was acquired by our current owners, uh, which is GFI and their partners, Elliott Management. And they were really looking to tap on Hyatt to kind of bring that lifestyle, you know, property back to New York City. And believe it or not, the whole idea was to stay open through the renovations. Uh, you are right now. <laughs> right, as an operating hotel, pandemic hit. They saw the opportunity to be able to do the renovations um, a little bit faster with closing the hotel. So they closed down for a little bit. Uh, renovations started 2020, uh, end of 2020, beginning of 2021. And then we opened as the Thompson Central Park November of last year. And it's just been a fantastic ride. Lots of support from the Hyatt side and just really, really proud of the product. Um, prior to it being Thompson Central Park, they ran it as a Hyatt affiliate for a little bit okay. um, called the Parker New York and um, transition November and here we are as Thompson are. Central and Park. And you're still going to be finishing off some of the stuff's in, we're in progress and it looks like it's going to be great. And in fact, this company that owns your hotel also owns the other two Thompson affiliated uh, hotels, the Beekman and then of course uh, the Guild Hall. I think, uh, right? Yeah, they own one of them. So oh, they own okay. the Beekman, um, which they opened prior to this one a couple years ago. And then there is a third Thompson hotel in New York called the Guild Hall, right. which is uh, managed by Hyatt, but separate ownership group. Got it. So the separate. So those are the Thompsons today but you're the only one that actually says Thompson on it uh, like that. Now let's talk about the accommodations because because of your background with the Park Marina you actually have a lot or are going to have or already have a lot of rooms right? Correct. Um, so basically we opened the hotel in phases. So November 1st we opened phase one and that was 352 rooms uh, consisting of kings, doubles, deluxes, studio suites which we're in right now. Um, and when it's all said and done, the hotel will have a total of 587 rooms. It's a big property. It is. Lots, lots of fun. Um, you know, but it really, the, the really special thing about the property is its location. Right. You know, stone throw away from Central Park, um, right down the road from Carnegie Hall, Museum of Modern Art. You could get anywhere on the island with public transportation, literally within minutes. It's just, it's a really, really special asset. Well, you are right around the corner from Carnegie Hall. And if you look out some of the windows, you can see Central Park. <laughs> so is Central pa my room has Central Park view. You got to sell that one, right? Well, we had to take good care of you, right? <laughs> we knew you were coming. Well, we, we had to give you the best. I was saying, why are we calling it? It's on 50 West 56th Street, which, you know, Central Park, for those of you who don't know, is uh, 59th Street. Uh, but you can see Central Park, and it is certainly a quick walk. A walk from there. Now you got some interesting other things going on and you're starting. You do have a, a very great workout room and a, I think a blow dry place and a lot of things downstairs in the basement, right? Correct. Yeah. Um, so outside of the public areas that you see walking through the door and the food and beverage outlets, which, which we could talk about we later. Are. Yeah, we are. I'm That's sure always important. I'm sure of it, but we do have what we call our underground that has a fitness center down there. Brand new equipment just showed up last week, still putting Pelotons, a lot of Pelotons, Pelotons down there. Uh, they are a necessity these days yeah. and then like you said we also have a uh, a few beauty shops down there really to help with kind of the well-being and wellness of the travelers these days um, you know it's very important these days that for people that are in the wellness realm of things that they could continue that on on their travels you know a lot of times you work out at home you eat healthy as soon as you get on the road you're eating junk and you're not working out so. I, I know the feeling <laughs> we all do so we have the opportunity here if you want it to go and work out and uh, you know we have dry bar down there which is a uh, blowout um, hair salon along with other I think beauty you and services I go down there a little later I'm, I'm starting to lose the hair though James. It's starting to get a little 
little thin up here. Oh, that's why you need a good blow dry, baby. Look up it's because I run a 589 room hotel, right? It's a <laughs> it, it, that will that'll do it. That'll do it. right. Absolutely. So, so yeah, that's great. Now let let's do get to that uh, the food and beverage uh, component. You're still working on a lot of the spaces, right. but one of the most famous spaces that you have retained from the old Parker Meridian days is the Burger Bar, which I remember going to, and it's the same way. If you have to just find it, that was the case. Uh, you know what uh, we I. I I strongly believe in if it's not broken, don't fix it. And it has been such a New York City landmark for years. As soon as you say the word La Parker Meridian, first words out of everybody's mouth is, isn't that where the burger joint is? Yeah, burger. yeah, so it's really a hidden gem within the hotel. And it's behind a large red curtain. And everybody knows, look for the red curtain, you'll find the burger. And the red curtain's still there. You haven't gotten it down. Right? Yeah, it's a little tiny space. Um, you know, the whole allure of it is you can walk in and write all over the walls. And it's very grungy looking. And, and you kept all the writing and all the, all the posters and everything else. Absolutely. Right? We kept the old 45-year-old TV up in the corner there. And to be completely honest with you, James, in good times, the lineup for the burger joint could go out the front door of the hotel and almost down to 6th Avenue. And that's what people love about it. Mm. Um, you know, they love waiting in line. They love the whole build up and, and anticipation of going in. And then you get to see your burger being cooked right in front of you. Um, and it's just, you know, it's a really, really special, special outlet with too much history to it, where it was very, very important that we kept it here. Well, it's interesting. There are very few uh, burger outlets that would be that important to keep, <laughs> but you, you're doing a great job keeping yeah. this one because even I know the burger <laughs> joint because I, that, I, I don't think, I don't know if I ever stayed in the Parker Meridian, but I did go to the burger joint. I was the same way. You know, I went to the burger joint probably 15 years ago and never would I think in a million years, 15 years later, here I am running the building that it's in. And, and uh, it's a little dangerous because I don't know how many burgers you have to consume <laughs> during the course of a week. I try to only do one a week. I, I call it my Tuesday burger day. <laughs> now, beyond that, you have a, you, you have a bar now, but you're going to have some expanded bar space. I saw the renderings and you're going to see them here. Uh, uh, it looks like a beautiful space off the lobby, right? Correct. So currently we have what we call our temporary bar. Uh, it's called SRO, which stands for standing room only. And it was the whole notion of when you go to a Broadway show and you kind of, it's sold out and you have to stand up and you kind of get that last minute ticket where you're standing up and watching the show. Uh, we do light fare there for breakfast mm -hmm. and then we have a pretty extensive be beverage program there in the evening. And then for phase two, which will be around May or June, that goes away and we open up the atrium. And the atrium is going to have our full lobby bar, permanent lobby bar, three meal a day restaurant. Um, what is that going to be? Any clues about what that will be eventually? Um, we're, there's a few names that are being thrown out right now. Um, so nothing that I'm ready to divulge yet, but it's, it's in between two. And that is, as you said, three, three meals a day. So you'll have the burger joint and you'll have this one, right? That's correct. And then uh, we also have in-room dining as well. Um, you know, and in-room dining has really come back full steam ahead, unfortunately, due to COVID. But prior to COVID, you know, a lot of hotels were unfortunately closing their in-room dining um, outlets and it has just come back full steam. You know, people just at this point just still feel more comfortable sitting in their room and eating and not having to be so close to people and not knowing where the cutlery came from. So it's it's really come back and it's it's an important part of, of our outlets. And, you know, with the permanent lobby bar, once it opens, uh, it's going to be a heavy, heavy beverage program. Very, very cool, unique, fun, classic cocktails, um, craft cocktails, a great beer selection, great wine selection. But it's really all about the activation, the buzz, the feel, the smells. We're going to have live music in the lobby. Um, the entire hotel, the concept is is all related around music. Yeah, well, because we, you can't see behind us, but uh, and they, some of the, the 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 illustrations around the rooms are instruments, and it's sort of a jazz theme, right? Correct. And and fun fact: before Parker Mer before La Parker Meridian, there used to be a recording studio housed here, and that's you know we really wanted to keep with the history of the building and uh, specifically jazz. So there's going to be a lot of um, you know jazz feelings within the hotel and a lot of our public lobby activations are going to be revolved around live jazz music and so you're going to have live jazz in the lobby that'd be that'd be fantastic you got to invite me back for that one i'd like to come and see it you have an open invitation my friend okay. no, that'll be fantastic you're such a prime location here we were talking about it earlier with the carnegie hall central park not too far away 
Broadway is in walking distance for we were in Broadway last night um, it, it just really is such a central location it always has been and now now you have it overseas now um, I want to go back quickly to the rooms before we close out uh, because you do have some unique things. The beds, I got to say, are amazing. Right? <laughs> you know what? At the end of the day, when when you have a hotel, what you're trying to provide to your customers is a comfortable night's sleep. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a comfortable bed, the coolness and the look and the feel and the allure is cool when you first walk in the door. But if you're not getting a comfortable night's sleep, you, you kind of miss the buck with it. And, you know, we uh, we kept some aspects of the old rooms as in the swivel right. tv here uh, that was with parker and the parker meridian but um you know really really heavy wood tones a ton of natural light that comes in yeah, over the, the way you got you know picture windows looking out over the buildings around you and then eventually to central park and things like that so it is a very comfortable room we're in the suite but you know the furniture is always similar and wonderful couches very comfortable and you know books uh you know tabletop books all around that are kind of interesting and we were looking at one last night that was like that that's pretty cool where can we get that one yeah. right and music themed as well right. a lot of them are music themed but um you know it was important to us to keep the rich history of the building but bring it into modern day era right. and i think our ownership groups did a i think they nailed it you know it's it's still it still has the warmth that it always had and uh, one thing james that's really special about this property is 95% of the staff that were here back 20, 30 years ago are still here today. That's fantastic. So you really are, are in touch with the local community. They they know this property and they obviously like to like it and they wanted to stay on. 100%. And it's what really makes it special. You know, uh, literally 30, 40 years. We have some members of our housekeeping team that's been here longer than 40 years. Mm -hmm. And you know, with the clientele that used to stay here, uh, the ones that have been coming back. I've literally seen them walk in and have tears run down their face when they see those same associates here. And it's what really, really makes it a special building. You know, they did a great job on the renovation. The rooms are phenomenal. The public space is phenomenal. But the feel, the family warmth feel that you get when you walk in and you see these associates that have been here for so long is what really makes it special. And that's great. And you actually, you, you've been with a Hyatt or Hyatt affiliated in various roles for quite some time as well, right? Correct. Um, I worked for a Hyatt franchise for a few years um, out in Jersey City. And then I was also with another Hyatt franchise out in Princeton, New Jersey. Uh, but um, actually originally from Toronto, Canada, and I, and I came out. Well, they let you in, huh? They did. They <laughs> let me in. They let me in about 22 years ago for a summer vacation, and I never ended never up going home, home. <laughs> right? Yeah. They can't get rid of you guys, when they're like, but you ended up in the hotel industry, Absolutely. so that's great. Yeah. yeah, and I went to school for hotel and restaurant management, and to be honest, when I moved to New York, back in those days, you would put the suit and tie on, and you would pound the pavement looking for jobs. It wasn't as much online, mm -hmm. and I would put resumes in everywhere from Howard Johnson, up to four seasons and just started my career in the five star five diamond segment with hotels like Trump International and Mandarin Oriental but then I started opening a lot of hotels and I've actually had the pleasure to open about seven or eight hotels within the New York New Jersey market and you know sometimes I say I must be crazy every time I open one I say it's my last one <laughs> and then somehow well, it's this, <laughs> but this had to be a pretty good challenge that you wanted to take on because Thompson Midtown I mean all of the history of this place and and of course uh, the location is just amazing yeah absolutely and you know being being managed by Hyatt you know if you're if you're gonna work you might as well work for the best right so yeah amazing well Anything else you want to tell? We go out to about 100,000 travel advisors right now. We're hopefully looking at this and uh, we'll be looking for new hotels they want to book in, in Midtown. And, and to be honest with you, there hadn't been a lot of new hotels uh, during COVID. Uh, we're starting to see now an influx of some coming in in the market. We're going to see a bunch in the next couple of years. Uh, but anything else you want to tell them? Um, yeah, I think one thing important to know is we create unique, memorable, specific experiences. And what I mean by that is no stay, no two stays in this hotel have to be the same. We reach out to all of our guests prior to their arrival. We know what their preferences are. We know when their birthday is. We really have all the tools and supplies to really, really make it unique and specific to, to what you want. And, you know, that's all great. But if the team isn't on board with that vision, you're gonna fail. We have a team that's on board with that vision that just really doesn't wanna be the next hotel on the block. Mm -hmm. um, they wanna be special, they wanna be unique, they want the clients to have memorable experiences so that they come back for years to come. And I think so far we've been nailing that and you know I think as long as that's what the vision and that's what the goal is moving forward, 
and the team's on board with it, I think there's nothing but success down the road. Absolutely. And you're already developing sort of New York experiences. I saw you have one package where you can go you know, out in Central Park and all kinds of things. So you're really trying to connect with the local community, which is also one of the Thompson ethos, right? Absolutely. Uh, that was Pick NYC that you were talking about, and they do really unique picnics in all different parks uh, within New York. And they'll put igloos up for you. They will put tents up for you. Uh, but we've also partnered with Nordstrom's, you know, to help with that beauty and wellness. Uh, we partnered with Woman Rink. Uh, we have a package with them. So it's very important to us to be good neighbors in the community and, and really make sure that we're creating that, you know, New York experience for, for our guests. Well, Matt, I want to thank you again for your hospitality. It's great to hear this fabulous new hotel. Uh, so this is available now for, to book now. And the, the, it's, it's, it's a large hotel, but it's very comfortable. It's going to get even more comfortable when the bar comes in. And worst case, Sarah, come over and have a burger, right? There you go. Best burger in town. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks again. Thank you. Appreciate you, James. I'm James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report.